Hi everybody and welcome to floss tube number 19. I can't believe it's already been 19 episodes, but thank you for watching. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you tuned in. If you're a repeat watcher, thank you for keeping on coming back. It means a lot to me, so thank you very much. Um, today, I want to share a finish I have. It's Christmas, and I know Christmas is one of my favorite times to stitch. I just love all the bright Christmassy colors. I like the characters, the faces on them are usually always happy and and um, it's just to me a fun season to stitch. So I've had a lot of fun this past couple weeks stitching. And I know it's been a couple weeks since I came to you with the floss tube. We have had a busy, busy household. First of all, Thanksgiving. So we, we made it through Thanksgiving. Our youngest son was home. Oldest son was unable, he and his wife, to make it in. Um, this is her first year of residency, and so she's having to work most of the holidays, just kind of part of what, what happens when you're just starting out. But they spent Thanksgiving in Virginia, and hopefully we'll get to see them again sometime very soon. But Thanksgiving was great. I hope you and your families had a wonderful time as well. Um, after Thanksgiving, I was ready to start decorating for Christmas, and that's kind of a I make a bigger mess than, than what it starts out as. I have to drag everything out, empty my boxes, make up my mind. Do I want to put it in the same spot I had it last year? Or am I going to change it up some? So you guys probably completely understand. It's, it's an ordeal getting everything out and up. But I love it when it's, it's finished. I love to sit at night and in our living room and have the tree lights on. And to me, that's just one of the most relaxing times of the year. So I'm glad it's up. I'm glad it's, it's decorated. So now we can just keep doing it. Then we kind of had a little um, health scare. My mom and I had run some errands one day and we had gone out to eat. And we were sitting in the booth and she stepped down to go to the restroom. And when she did, she lost her balance. And I think it was just because she stepped down and it kind of took her by surprise. And she fell backwards and hit her head really, really hard. And, of course, it was just concrete floor and ended up with a concussion. So she's had a few weeks of recovery from that. She's doing great now. I know today she said she finally felt like she wasn't dizzy like she's been being. And uh, mom is just very active. And so to kind of be down um, and feeling dizzy and just not feeling herself, has been really hard on her because she, she likes to go and do and doesn't like to slow down. And so it's been an adjustment the last few weeks. But I'm so thankful that she didn't break any bones and it wasn't any more serious than it was. So you guys have been so sweet. We've had so many messages and texts and, and everybody checking on her and, and praying for her. And so thank you so much from Mom and I both. That really meant a lot to us. Well, she recovered enough that we decided to go ahead and take our yearly trip to Branson. Ever since my dad passed away, and he's been gone over 30 years, um, we had started a tradition of going to Branson. It's about three hours from us, and they just have Christmas decorations everywhere, lots to see and do, and we go up and do our Christmas shopping. Then we buy wrapping paper, wrap everything in the hotel room, turn our Hallmark Christmas movies on while we're wrapping, have it done when we come back home. So we started that a little, a little bit after my dad passed away. So probably we've been doing it for maybe 28 years. And it's just something that we look forward to every year. And after mom had her concussion, we were kind of worried. I thought she may not feel like going. And, and I completely understand that, but she got to where she felt better, so it's a little later than we normally go, but we made it. So we, we just got back from Branson, and we had a wonderful time. We just relaxed, we did some stitching, watched a lot of Hallmark Christmas movies, and um, got our Christmas shopping finished. So that was a major accomplishment. But that's kind of one of our Christmas traditions, is just going up there, spending time together. Of course, we have to eat a little bit of fudge, and we have to... Um, eat some kettle corn, and uh, the place we stay has cobbler at night, so they serve breakfast in the mornings, 
And then at night, if you go to a show, they're usually over about 9 o'clock. And so they serve hot cobbler and ice cream for the night before the big show. So we always laugh and say, is it cobbler time? We've got to go down and get us a bowl of cobbler. So we, we just have a good time. So I hope you guys have been enjoying some time with your family. I know you probably have Christmas traditions that you do with them as well. So in today's comments, I hope that you'll post maybe a Christmas tradition that you enjoy with your family. And it's always fun to see and maybe get ideas for a new tradition. So I'm looking forward to seeing those. Let me show you my finish now. I have a Santa mug that I've had since I was a little girl. That's a long, long time. I'm sure it's an antique. But um, I just, you know how curious I am about things. And I thought, you know, when did these get started? I've seen them around a whole lot lately and um our antique mall that i love it's at spring hill if you're ever close to conway it's worth about a 15 minute drive on out of conway it's called Fiddler's mall and they have so many neat neat things to look at great finishing ideas sometimes i'll find something that i think would be cute to put the, the stitch piece on but just the way they display their booths it's not just piled up although sometimes that's kind of fun just to dig too but this is a antique mall that has booths that are displayed really neat. So I get ideas just looking at how they have their booths displayed sometimes. Well, I was in there a few weeks back and one booth had tons of Santa mugs and it just kind of caught my attention. And then I saw on Facebook, someone had posted where they did a whole collection of Santa mugs and made like at their coffee bar area. And I thought, how cute is that? I have Ray Dunn Christmas mugs in my coffee bar area, and I love them. But I thought, how cute the Christmas mug Santa mugs were. And she said she got the inspiration from a sign that she saw at Hobby Lobby last year. And I thought, oh, man, I love that sign. It was kind of an aqua background. And you'll see it on the cover for my floss tube, so you can zoom in and look at that if you want to closely. And it had a Santa mug. Oh, actually, I think it has two on it. And it was about hot cocoa. And I just thought, I wish I had seen that last year. I'd have got it and put it on. But that's before I put my Christmas decorations on. And so as I'm unpacking the Christmas decoration box for my kitchen, I see that same sign. Now, that's pretty bad. I'm confessing to you guys. I bought the sign and didn't remember buying the sign. So I was so thankful when I saw that. And um, Brenda Joy has, sorry, that's Dexter, mom's little pup. He's after the cat. Um, but mom, um, maybe she'll get in here in just a minute. Sorry. Um, but she has a pattern that is Santa, and I'll have it listed below. And it was a Santa in a cup. And I thought it was absolutely adorable, and I really needed to do it to go next to my coffee bar. And so that's my finish for this week. So let me show it to you. I just love Tim because I do have a little mug that I keep candy canes and that in downstairs by my coffee bar. But I finished him. I used 32 count weeks cocoa. I wanted it to be a little darker linen so the white and that clean kind of color I used for his ears would pop. And I'm happy with how that turned. I bought this little frame, it's on an easel from Hobby Lobby, and I'll have the number down below. And what I did, I covered one piece of sticky board. I just measured the inside dimension, and it's just a red and white check that I got from Hobby Lobby. They had all their homespun on sale a while back, so I got some of the red and white check, just put it on a diagonal, and mounted it first inside the easel. Then I took my stitch piece and mounted it on another piece of sticky board. I didn't do any warm and natural because I wanted it to kind of be flush with the side of the easel. And I was afraid if I put um, some, some kind of batting or warm and natural, it would make it stick up too high. And so that worked perfect too. Sticky boards and it, and it was still flush. Then I had some large red rickrack that I had mounted and I put it on before I glued the stitch piece. And then I had some of these cute little buttons. I added some of those just with hot glue on the rickrack. 
top and bottom, and I got those at Hobby Lobby. I have their number down below as well. And there's like a package of, oh, probably 60 or 80 of them. So it didn't take, I've got tons left. And added that. Then I put a bow. I just used some of the red and white check and the aqua dot to kind of pull this aqua color out. And I did change that color on the pattern because I wanted it to match the other little sign, the one that I forgot I had and I realized I had it when I unpacked. I wanted it to match the aqua in that sign. So that's why I chose this color and kind of changed some of the, the color on the pattern to match. And then I covered a button with some of the red and white gingham. And I had this little piece. This was a little part of an ornament that came from, I think that came from Walmart. Added that to the bow, just hot glued all that on top. And that's my finish. So he was so much fun. I have him sitting on my coffee bar and you'll see that in the picture for the for this floss tube. And it was not a hard stitch. I will be honest, this part right here, all of his beard, it seemed like that took forever to fill in. But what I ended up doing, I just stitched the outline. And then while I was watching TV at night, visiting with my husband, I could just fill that in. I didn't have to think about it. So that was a recommendation I would make. It's just easier to fill in that way. Now on the pattern, she has this charted for the little pom-pom at the end of Santa's hat, but she also, the picture shows a real pom-pom that she has glued on top of her stitched one. And that kind of gives it a three-dimensional look. I did not add that to mine, but that's something you could do if you, if you wanted yours to have a little bit more three-dimensional look to it. So that's my one big finish this, this last week. I also, since I was in the mood for these Santa cups, Hobby Lobby had these little bitty Santa cups over down one of the Christmas aisles. And I thought, how cute would this be to make a pin cushion out of it? So I got two. I did one for me, and this one I'm going to give away this week. And what I did, I had some dark green. You could use any color you wanted. But I had some dark green that I decided, and I just needle felted that and then glued it into the top of the mug. And so that's just a fun little pin cushion you can sit by your stitching chair while you're stitching Christmas this year and um, comes in handy. I have a needle felted salt cellar that I keep by my stitching chair and I love to use, but I thought this would be a fun way to add some Christmas decoration to my stitching area. Now, I want to share, because you guys know a history lesson's coming, don't you? Um, I started Googling and looking up, when did Santa Mugs get started? Was there, is there history behind that? And I found out there really is. The Santa Mug craze kind of started in the 1940s, well, I think it was 1949, so nearly 1950. And I think it was so neat the way it was started. There was, I believe, let me look at the name, be sure I tell you correctly. Grant Holt, and then two brothers, Robert and John Howard. So it was a, one gentleman named Holt and two Howard brothers. They were all college friends. They met in college and got to be good friends. And they, who knows how they came up with this idea, but they decided that they could make some money um, selling Christmas tableware. And so they made lots and lots of different designs, but probably the most popular, the one we hear the most about, are the Santa mugs. And so they borrowed $9,000. And now in today's time, that probably wouldn't get a business going very far. But and in 1949, that was probably a good deal of money. And so they asked their family if they could borrow $9,000 to start this company. They called it Holt and Howard Company. And they would make their table decor items and sell them to department stores. They also had them put in catalogs that people could order. And it just kind of took off. And so it even reached the point that in the nineteen mid-1950s, they were still doing well. And they shipped part of their business to Japan. And so if you happen to have Santa mugs at home that you know are vintage, it might be worth checking the bottom of them. 
because if it is an original Holt Howard Company mug, on the bottom it will be stamped into the ceramic Holt and Howard. If it came from their Japan um, division that they opened up, it will have a gold foil sticker that simply says Japan. So I actually have a Holt and Howard mug that I want to show you. And this is what he looks like. I love his little facial expression, how he's winking. And if you can see, I think maybe there you can tell, that one eye is a little green jewel. So he really kind of sparkles. He's, got, he's definitely got a twinkle in his eye. And so on the bottom, if I turn it over, hopefully you can see, you'll see where it says Holt and Howard. And then this one would happen to be made in their Japan division because there's a little gold foil sticker that says Japan. So that might be something fun. If you have some Santa mugs at home, dig them out and see. Who knows? You may have a Holt Howard mug at home already. Um, I have another Santa mug that I've had since I was a little girl, and it didn't have Holt Howard on the bottom of it. It's just a regular, I'm not even sure who made it, but I still love it. It's really cute, and he is a little different than this one. I love the guy winking on this one. So that's my history lesson for today about the vintage Santa mugs. Lots of cute ways to display them. The one I have downstairs that was from when I was a little girl, I have a little bottle brush tree that fits down in it. And so I just have the little tree in the mug and it's sitting over on my coffee bar as well. So lots of fun ways to display them and use them here at Christmas. Now I'm gonna show you my whip. This is one that has been in timeout for quite a while. I love it. It's not in timeout because I don't like it. I absolutely love this particular whip. And when I first saw it, and it's been probably seven or eight years ago, I fell in love with it at Stitcher's Garden, my LES. Um, Shannon was working on it and had it displayed in the store, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I thought, I have to do that. But oh my goodness, I mean, it was 12 um, little patterns, it was the big piece of fabric, all the floss. And I thought, I just don't know if I need to splurge on that. Well, Mom got that for me for one of my Christmas presents. Well, she's been giving me fits because she's like, you still have not stitched that. And I think it just kind of overwhelmed me because there it was so big. So I got in the mood again. I've been thinking about it and thought, I'm going to pull that out. And that's going to be my Christmas stitch this month. Um, and part of January. I'm determined to get this finished this year. And when I do, I want to send it to Jill Rensel because I think she can do some absolutely adorable um, things with it. So I'll be anxious to get that done. May not get it back till next year, but that's okay because I know it'd be beautiful when she finishes. But I'll show you what I have done so far. Um, I have the first two little houses and I'm working on that third one. So you see, it's a huge piece of fabric, but I am real excited about doing it. And I'm gonna try and play a mind game with myself. Instead of being overwhelmed because it's so big, I'm going to focus on one house at a time and just think, oh, celebrate each house being finished. Then it's done in small chunks rather than just thinking, oh my heavens, I've got you know, nine more houses to do. I'm going to think of it, each house completion as a major accomplishment. So we'll see how it goes. Y'all keep encouraging me to get this finished. And um, we'll see, see what Jill does with it when it, I get it out to her. But that's, and if you can see, I'm not sure if up closer is better or back further. The fabric has just a little bit of glitter in it. And I'm kind of funny because I don't like to touch glitter. It kind of, gives me the eebie-jeebies. I think it's just the way it feels. But this fabric is so soft that it really doesn't bother me. And so I think it just adds a little Christmassy look to it by having the glitter in it. So this is one piece of glitter fabric that I don't mind touching. So this is my whip, probably for the whole month and maybe next month too. But I'm really going to work hard on it. Now, um, next week, I'll tell you what else I have coming up. I had promised a few weeks ago that I would do a tea towel project bag tutorial and I will be filming that and posting it this next week. 
I am currently boxing everything up to get shipped out first of this next week. I'm hosting a Zoom retreat called For the Love of Samplers. That's going to be happening January 27th and 28th. Um, Claudia Kistler and Richard Grisek are helping present at this retreat. I'm so excited. I talked to Claudia um, day before yesterday, and she is just so full of knowledge, and Richard is as well, and I can't wait to continue learning, just hearing what they have to present and seeing what we can learn more about samplers. So I have been super busy getting ready, getting the boxes all packed up, and I'll want to get those out to all the participants next week. So that's what I've been working on. But as soon as those boxes ship first of the week, I will take time and do the Prachi Bay tea twirl. So if you have a tea towel from someplace that you visited, get it out, get ready, and hopefully after you watch the tutorial this next week, you'll be able to make your very own Prachi Bay using a tea towel that you picked up from somewhere. So even now, even if it's not from a place you visit, there's so many cute Christmas tea towels. You can make a Christmas project bag and have it ready to present at Christmas tea time. So just something to kind of be looking forward to. I also have another request to do a house tour for Christmas, and I will try and do that the following week and just take you on a tour of my new old home and show you our Christmas decorations and wish you Merry Christmas from our house to you. So those are two things coming up that I'm excited to share with you. And I just appreciate you taking time to watch and um, kind of join in this community with me. So thank you. Um, I do have some winners from last week. I'm going to show you. Well, first of all, before I get to the winners, I have to show you my haul because it's on top of my prizes. So let me show you what I got this week. Um... I got this little book. It's a Needlework Enthusiast Book of Days 2022. It's from Needlework Press, and I am so excited. I'm really going to try and use this this year. I've not been good about recording as I'm working on something, but that's a goal that I'm going to set kind of a New Year's resolution early and try and record what I'm working on and how it's going, um, any little things that I'm, I'm noticing as I'm working on something. And this is so cool. It has the calendar. It also has little quotes kind of scattered through it, places for notes, or if there's in the back, it's um, uses based graph items that you might want to include in future projects. So there are some really cute things in this little book. So just an idea, something you may want to go out and check on. Your um, local LNS may have one of these as well, but I'm, I'm excited. Got that in the mail this week. Then, from Homestead Needleworks, April Whitaker, um, I got this little hanger, and I have a Valentine thing kind of in mind that I'm wanting to do for this. And you can mount your stitching piece in between it's got the little knob on the front. She already has the hanger on the back. She had these in different colors, but I wanted the red. So, to be continued, you'll have to see what I end up doing with this. But once again, got it in the mail. It was packaged so nice. And I'm, I'm just super excited to use that for a project. Then, when Mom and I went to Branson, I had to visit Cecilia's Samplers. And if you ever go to Branson, it's definitely a shop worth, worth checking out. She has so much stuff in that shop. I could spend several hours just looking around. And um, I'm fortunate because I have Citrus Garden here in Conway. That's my local LNS. And I, it's maybe five minute drive from my house. So that's, that's kind of dangerous. And you know, I've had lots and lots of pink bags. And I have one in my basket still to share with you today. But when I go out of town, if there is a needlework shop anywhere near, I like to check it out. And so I did a little bit of damage when I went to Cecilia's this week. Um, she had these little packets and um, notions always intrigue me. I'm always like, oh, that's a new notion. I don't have that. I must get it. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys do that too? This was a needle carry card. And I'm not sure if you can see, but you just put your needles in those little slots and it's a nice thick leather. So it kind of holds. What I also liked about it there's a little hole up at the top 
So if you do the floss drops and you have your little ring, you could also hook this on one of your floss drop rings for whatever project you happen to be working on at the time. So I got two. I got a green one and a blue one. So I'm going to keep one and I'm going to give one away this week. So that was kind of fun. Just a different little notion that I've never seen before. Then I know Valentine is coming up. I just had a project bag sale for Christmas. The next bag sale will be in January and it will be for Valentine. And I've got several already stitched, but I saw this and just saw it. it was adorable. Heart and hand. It says, love is the greatest adventure. You guys know I like a good adventure, so I thought that would be something definitely I need to stitch. This one is illustrated ABC with original engravings and needlework charts. And I don't want to open it up because then I'm going to show the pattern, but I can show you this side. They'll have on one side, they'll have like the alphabet with a little saying, and then the other side of the page is a little chart. And I think this would be so much fun to do like a long sampler, either a, a roll or if you had a long paddle. I have a long paddle that I got from TJ Maxx last fall, and I haven't found something to put on it. So I'm going to look at this. This might be something that would fit on that paddle. But it just says on the back, um, it's from a well-loved 19th century alphabet book. And they added some charts that could be tied in with it. They give some suggestions for colors you could use, but you can change that up and use whatever colors you'd like to. It said the book's author was a writer, poet, and publisher in New London, Connecticut. Uh, one of his books talked about the seaport city, which was founded in 1646. It was a busy whaling port in the night. Sorry, my alarm went off on my phone and I had to stop. Um, so anyway, the author of this book, it said that New London, the place he was from, was known especially for shipping and industrial activities. So you might find some references to that in this little book as well. So just because I like history and, and antique samplers and things, I thought this might be an interesting little book. And that came from Cecilia's as well. Then, I'm not sure if you've seen, I think I shared one several videos back. It's from Heartstring Samplery, and it's called Sunday Stitches, and it's a series that she has, has been doing. This one is Blessed Assurance, and as soon as I saw it, that song started going through my head. I could remember as a little girl, um, I know our church now has a screen that they put the words up on, and we stand and sing more worship praise music. But as a little girl in a little Southern Baptist church, we had our hymnals that we would pull out. And this song is one, and a lot of them that Beth has used for the Sunday Stitch series. As soon as I see it, that song starts playing in my head. And it, they're usually these songs from the old hymnals. And it just brings back really fun memories. And so I know Mom loves to stitch this type of um of work and especially from heartstring and so I saw it and I'm like oh I better get that I think mom would like that one and she did she was thrilled so that's that's just a fun series that she's doing then I'm hoping Mary Susan if you're watching my friend Mary Susan um every year we get together for beach week and we celebrate because we're all scattered we're uh, Mary Susan's in Virginia um, Judy's in Alabama, Julie and Dee and Christy are in Texas, I'm in Arkansas, we're all scattered. So when we get together for Beach Week, we try and celebrate each other's birthday. So everybody has a different day that's their birthday. We have to wear a birthday tiara and, and, and it doesn't matter where we go, we have to wear that tiara for the day and we exchange gifts. So um, one year, Mary Susan purchased half dolls for all of us. And it's our job to get those finished into a pig cushion. So I've been looking at it because I've never done that before. You know, oh my goodness, I can make a project bag. I can make a pillow. I can do some other finishing, but I've never done a half doll. So that's a challenge. Mary Susan has an engineering background. So this kind of stuff is just natural for her. She can put together all kinds of things. I have to think about it for a little while. But I found this pattern for a half doll. So, Mary Susie, if you're watching, I'm going to attempt after Christmas to actually finish my half doll before Beach Week this year. And if I get it done, I'll bring it to Beach Week. So, I thought maybe this will help me since there is a pattern with instructions. I'll have to read the instructions several times 
and maybe I'll get this this finish for my head doll. If I do, I'll show you guys. Then I got this from Silver Creek Samplers. This is another Valentine kind of themed um, piece. And it says, follow your heart, but take your stitching with you. I absolutely love this. You've heard me tell stories about when I go shopping or running errands. Mom rides with me. She doesn't get out usually, but she takes her stitching, keeps it in the car, and she always has something in there that she can stitch on. And when I saw this, I'm like, oh my heavens, this is mom made over because follow your heart. She's following me where I'm going and take her in her stitching with her. So I've got to keep this. I'm so pissed to love it. Then along with the Valentine theme bags for January, we're also going to have some that have a pet theme to them because we love our pets. And this is by Erica Michaels, Life is Better, Woof. And she shows it as a little strawberry, and then it's also as a little pillow. It's going to be on a project bag for me. So that's one to be looking for this next month. Then, when I do the house tour, you'll see upstairs, as you come up the front staircase, I have a little built-in library. And in that little nook is, um, there's floor to ceiling shelves with books, but then I have what used to be my rocking chair. And then it was my dad's rocking chair when he was a little boy before I used it. And then my boys used it when they were little. And so I have that rocking chair sitting in the little reading nook. And I have a small tree and some Christmassy things. But I saw this, it's called Story Time with Santa by Cottage Garden. And I thought, I have got to stitch this for next year. I won't get it done now, but for next year. And it's Santa reading a book in a little village. And I just think that would be so sweet for that particular spot. So that's a, for next year. I've got to get it done. By, well, I need to get it done before next year. But I'm going to get it up for this Christmas. Then this is another Valentine by My Big Toe. And sometime, I want to ask where they came up with that name. I, it tickles me every time I read it. So, uh, if anybody knows how My Big Toe came up with their name, tell me. I'd like to know. I think it's so funny. And it always catches my attention. So, that was a smart move on their part. But it says, love completely. And I just think that's so sweet. Then I have one last purchase from Cecilia's. And it was a Blackbird book, Sewing Club. I didn't have this book. And I have this particular well a box similar that I think that will fit on that I want to do. And I just love anything Blackbird anyway. So I was able to pick that up. So that's my haul from Cecilia's. Then I got a couple. I got one for me and then one to give, give away to someone. But it's a little sewing roll from Susan Greening Davis, still stitching Susan. And I think it's so cute. You just undo and then as it unrolls, you could lay your stitching here and then roll it back up and it keeps it safe. It keeps it from getting messed up and all wrinkled. I need to use this because I always get tons of wrinkles in mine because I just waller them all over the place. Then on one end, there's a little hole you could put, you untie that and put some things down in there if you needed to. The other end is a little felted pin cushion. So I thought that was adorable. So if you want a sewing roll, um, check with Susan. That's where I got this. She has different sizes, but this one is small enough. It would go down in my project bag even. And so that's why I just, I love that. Then, but wait, there's more. Guess where I went? Stitcher's card and there's my pink bag. It just wouldn't seem right if I did not have a pink bag, so I have to show you what I've got in my pink bag. Um, this one is from Hands On Design, Bottle Brush Tree Farm. I think that's adorable. Then the Snowball by Brenda Gervais. I think those are so sweet. And then there's some more in the back. Then I have been wanting this so bad because you know I'm violence and verses. It's the Blackbird Designs Violets Blue, and I'm wanting to do this little house in it with all the violets that you can do. So hopefully I'll get that done sometime this spring. Then, let's see, I think these other things, now I got hats off to Uncle Sam. 
then I ordered, someone had posted on the Blackbird page about a sale. And I'll have to look. I'll, I'll try and put it down below because I couldn't actually remember the name of the company. It was an online company, but I'll have it posted down below. And they were having a sale on all their Blackbird patterns. And so I kind of went and looked at those. But the wall that has my TV on it, I am wanting to do Blackbird, just have a Blackbird wall. I love their designs, and they have several that are um, kind of in the blues and creams, which matches my living room. And so Mom and I, I told her, I said, after Christmas, I want us to really focus on stitching for that wall. So I'm going to show you some of the ones that I got. This is Bluebird of Happiness. That's just sweet. This is the Eleanor Rigby and Sweet Baby, but I'm probably going to change the colors to a little bit lighter blue. My friend's house. And this one is the Country Life. Then it was Christmas Rose, just a pretty Christmas rose. end up dropping all of them. Pumpkin Farm. I saw someone post their finish on that this year and I thought, oh, that's so cute. I'm going to have to do it now. Isn't it funny how sometimes you don't think about it until you see it actually finished and then it makes you want to stitch it. Or it does me. Then this one is Pleasure of the Fleeting Year. This is one that we want to stitch to go on that one more. The Summer Beaming Forth. The light upon the lawn. And these all, most of these that we're wanting to do for the wall have birds in them. And they're all in these blue tones. This one is Sing a Song of Seasons. And then All the Hills Echoed. I just love those. So, I went a little crazy on Blackbird patterns this month, but that's okay. I, I was able to get several that I really wanted, and I'll have fun stitching on them. Then... I found this ribbon at Hobby Lobby, and I absolutely love it. I haven't put it on anything yet, but I got one for me and one to give away this week, and it looks like cross-stitching. It says, Merry Christmas, but can you tell? It just looks like little, maybe hold it back a little bit. It looks like little bitty cross-stitches, so that would be a cute bow on a finished project. Then I received this in the mail from Allison. And she said she had two of these patterns. It's Bunny Bakery. So I'll give this away this week. And thank you, Allison. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the sweet card. And thank you for um, donating this pattern for us to give away. That was very sweet of you. Then I have a couple others that were donated by Carol Steele. So Carol, thank you for your box of donations. When she came to the retreat in August, she brought me a whole box of goodies. She said, I went through all my stash and things I had double of or things I weren't going to get to, to stitch. She said, I thought you might can use them to give away. So thank you, Carol. That was so sweet of you, too. It says, have a Merry Christmas. So real cute little chart. It's got everything in it you need to stitch it. Same thing for this one. It says, tis the season. It's already kitted up. And this one is beautiful. Christmas Traditions, Three Wise Men. And the same thing. It has everything you need in it to actually stitch it. So I have those three charts that I'll give away from Kara. And I think that's it, other than the little Santa mug that I will give away that I've already felt it. Um, last week's winners, let me show you the, the prizes from last week and tell you who won. We had this little spatula, Christmas spatula with the truck cookie cutter, and that's Rhonda Wise. And I'll have these names listed below too. But Rhonda, if you're watching this week, send me an email with your mailing address and I'll get this sent out to you. I also have this little bundle of cute Christmas fabrics. This goes to Glenda Gomez. So Glenda, if you're watching, go ahead and send me your email. I have um, your mailing address and I'll have my email listed down below. So congratulations, Glenda and Rhonda. I have the Stork Scissors that I'm carrying over. This goes to April Jackson. 
So April, if you will message me your mailing address. I have your old one, but I think you may have moved. So be sure and get me your mailing address and I'll get these sent out to you. Then I had this little hand embroidery book that I picked up at the PSS retreat. I love mine. I got one for me and one to give away. This goes to S. Vance. So if you're watching this week, be sure and let me know your mailing address. Then I had one more giveaway. And this was when I went to visit my son and the town he lives in, which is Harrisonburg, has the Virginia Quilt Museum. And I got a little tool bag that would be great for holding some stitching notions and things. And that goes to the 614 Stitcher. So if you'll get me your mailing address, I'll get that out to you this next week as well. So thank you guys so much once again for subscribing. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. As soon as I hit 2,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a $50 gift certificate to um, Stitcher's Garden. And even though it may not be your local LMS, she has a great online shop. You can go online and spend your gift certificate, and hopefully you'll get to enjoy that. So we're getting closer and closer each week. So if you have friends that haven't watched, please share my channel. I would sure appreciate it. If you have a floss tube, if you don't mind sharing, I appreciate it. And um, hopefully we'll reach that 2,000 um, subscriber goal very soon. But thanks again. Thanks for um, sharing your thoughts and ideas on the brew last week. And I did finally decide I'm just going to frame it. I took all of your comments to heart and looked and thought again about their apartment. And probably framing is the best option for them. So once that gets back from the framer, I'll share it with you before um, we have to tell witnesses. So hopefully I'll have it to you soon. But thanks once again. You guys take care. Um, please keep everybody that was affected by the tornadoes last night. We were fortunate. We had sirens going off, but it didn't touch down anywhere here. And um, I feel very lucky because there were lots of, of people who unfortunately weren't quite as lucky as we were. So um, just keep those people that lost family members or businesses or homes in your prayers as they start the recovery process this next week. And I will talk to you guys very soon. Be watching. Hopefully I'll have my uh, Project Bag tutorial up towards the end of this week. So take care and I will talk to you.